pretty f***ed up. Yeah, I agree. Evil Within 2 returns us to a survival horror series that has evil not as much resident as overcrowded. Yes, this is very much in the mould of the original Resident Evil titles, with it pushing itself away from the original feel and pacing of the Evil Within. And from my first few hours of the game, this is far more Resident Evil than Silent Hill of that title, and it certainly has a little inspiration there of The Last of Us. Although, like I say, the Evil Within was an incredible game, despite all its faults and issues, it was still an enjoyable title overall. father of Resident Evil and the original title Shinji Mikami is no longer at the helm here but he still produces the title but it has a very different feel and layout and it's feeding the monster with the id tech power as before with some subtle differences this time called the stem engine which is only an iterative name from the story themes of this very game meaning this is an engine designed around achieving the results the developers wanted specifically for this title and it's a damn impressive one at that but there is a mixture here of the visual quality and style on offer here i look at both pc versions from a standard base 8350 yes an amd 8350 is still ticking powered with nv NVIDIA's GTX 750 Ti. A great machine for entry-level PC gaming, but how does it stack up against the challenge of an id tech evil within monster? And against it in the other corner is NVIDIA's bigger brother, the GTX 970, still one of the longest running cars that I've ever had in one machine for this period of time, paired with an Intel i5-4690K. This machine has quite a bit more grunt to see just what the engine can achieve if you push the machine further on. So let's get into the details. So from a settings menu, chromatic aberration can instantly be turned off for those that hate it, so that's good. And you can also, like the original game on PC and console alike, reduce the film grain right down to zero. On top of this, you can go into the additional advanced settings and change everything from presets, which go from low, medium, high and ultra, right down to individually setting things from anti-aliasing, shadow quality, the screen space reflection quality, the volumetrics, the motion blur and so on and so forth. The game has a combination of an FXAA post-process solution and a temporal AA solution and you can also bump the resolution right up to native 4k and then from this you can run half refresh rate full refresh rate or even just turn v-sync off from that 60 fps target but i do use the word target there this isn't a great performing title on pc at this point it's not terrible but it's not great now there's two reasons why i feel this one i feel there's a combination here of gpu load and cpu load even though you're not seeing the command key buffer being maxed out that doesn't mean that they're not utilizing the gpu quite heavily during frame to frame and you see this at points when you zoom in and you get additional details on the characters the logs the textures and all the post processing that goes on it can drop the frame rate right down but if you max both of these cards out and at least bump them up to the highest settings they can possibly achieve you'll reach a ceiling of around 33 on the nvidia gtx 750 ti and around 50 to 52 on the gtx 970 that is the high point but it will fluctuate between those levels you can see at my real-time performance graph here gives you a good indication of both machines as you can see the frame rates are very varied across the board 4k is completely off the cards and running anything lower than high medium ish on the 750 ti causes huge frame drops what you see here is the 750 ti running at high settings at 1080 and again that's a very similar performance level to what you see the gtx 970 achieve running at 4k i.e it's completely unplayable so if you have a card and a machine around the level here my entry one my 750 ti then you are really looking at 1080p sub 30 fps at low settings that's really the level you can bump it up a little bit higher and probably get to around medium or higher combination thereof. I will spend more time tweaking and do a full analysis of the best settings I can get to at this point. But that's around the level you can expect. Now you can obviously expect a lot more on the 970 and i5 and probably even above 60 FPS to turn V-Sync off if you've got a much more powerful card, something like a 1070 or one of the AMD Vega cards. But here with the 970, then 60 FPS options are off the table no matter what you do. You can see an example here dropping at 720p and low still doesn't fix that. Now this doesn't mean that it's GPU bound at this point and it's just solely CPU bound. Obviously there is CPU issues, but you can see the utilization. It will use all eight cores on my FX8350, but it won't max them out. They have included a very similar cutback version of the performance tool that we saw in Doom, the latest Doom, but it doesn't have the real-time frame graph 
but obviously my one here does show you this and it is required you can see that the cpu is the one lagging behind most of the time with its average frame rate on the fx 8350 here running around the 40 milliseconds obviously nowhere near fast enough if you want to deliver frames anywhere near the 30 fps target that is achieved sometimes throughout this game although the cutscenes which do stress the gpu much more they tend to have even more dip now frame time fluctuate between 16 and 33 milliseconds all the time so you can see on the graph there's a spike up and down all the time it doesn't give you a smooth frame rate but you can cap it to 30 and that is the preferred option until they work out some additional patches on the title this is a game that was designed first and foremost for 30 fps it's quite clear 33 milliseconds is the target and then brute forcing above that takes a hell of a lot more power than what you would normally expect and this is simply down to the fact they're not optimized over and above that frame refresh rate maybe they'll do this now dependent on the sales maybe they won't but this is a title that really unless you've got top end hardware 60 fps is not the best option although i still prefer to play it at this point at around the 45 so it's not all bad now visually like i say it's a bit of a mixed bag but overall the quality is quite high it obviously has a lot more color and material properties than the original title which was very washed out and very gray no real pbr material systems in there but here working from the likes of bethesda and all their other titles they have definitely shared material systems here with some of the floors walls and the parkour flooring looked very similar to what we saw in Prey and it's all the richer for it. These additional BRDFs on the material composites look much better here, allowing light to react on the surface level and a material level between fabric, cloth, floors and walls. Skin in particular looks excellent with a mixture of the stubble of the characters, their hair and the light that reflects off their eyes and the subsurface scattering on skin is a leap over what we saw in the previous title, as are the model generations themselves. The old title was never a bad looking game, but it did suffer from performance and a sub 1080p resolution, which has all been resolved here, depending on the hardware that you're running the game on. But the changes to the engine, the material system, and therefore the colour palette of the title is much better, giving a much broader range of environments, characters, and looks. Now, the character models themselves are very detailed, and the animation is very good throughout play. But the enemies themselves are a bit of a mixed bag at this point. The big hulking bosses that you get, or at least some of the more sinister creatures, are very well realised and look incredibly scary. Again, these still hark back to the Silent Hill era of the first title. But the other enemies, the ones that resemble clickers, dare I say, it have a more stable standard look to them but it's still a very good looking title so far this is not an open world title i read some reviews earlier this week and i was like open world this isn't an open world title this is open level so don't get confused and panic about the fact that you're just stuck in an open scape and there you go off on your way this is a linear controlled horror title just as you would expect but it has some open areas allowing you to explore and take things at a more leisurely pace and choose the option as you progress through the mixture between going from gameplay into the real-time cinematics is again very smooth and i really appreciate the way they've done this because it adds tension and atmosphere to the scene visually there's a good combination of techniques here cube maps screen space reflections volumetric light is used incredibly well lots of particle material systems and light again across the board is excellent but a lot of this comes down to the enhanced material system here which makes the old game look very dated and old school in such a short space of time they really have improved the technology here and it is very smooth motion blur including per object motion blur is well implemented here and the depth of field in the cutscenes and the fact that you get a focal length on the on the gun itself if you aim down and point towards different objects it will shift the focus on that depth of field blur and it's got some beautiful bokeh shapes on there and these happen during gameplay now this again like i say is a title that really stresses the gpu if you've got a lower ram card then the texture quality here there's no option here to change the texture quality it's standard across the board maybe also be eating into that shift it between the gpu and the system ram on a pc which is not not an issue on these consoles yes it does split up nicely it's worker threads across multiple cores even though this is a new named id tech engine it certainly has that look of older id tech titles with the textures loading in in that mega texture style so this is definitely an id tech derived engine if nothing else okay this is short and it's a to the point one but this is a first look analysis from bethesda so i do appreciate the fact that i've been setting this for review and i will cover this in far more detail in a full analysis of the 
the title and maybe even a full video or a certainly a written review on my website. As always though, if you enjoyed this or anything else that I've put together, then please feel free to subscribe, support me by liking the video below and sharing where appropriate. Read more on the website and also follow me over on Twitter where you can ask any questions you like around technology, PCs, gaming or anything else you want to talk to me about. You guys and girls take care, run fast, scream hard, but stay clear of those monsters. I'll catch you on the next one.